Hi guys, if you're tuning in, thank you so much for clicking this video. I'm really excited to make this one because creating eyebrows from nothing is something that I have spent lots of time trying to figure out. I watched a lot of brow tutorials when I was younger trying to figure out how to get my eyebrows to look the way the girls on Instagram had their eyebrows. I just don't have a lot to work with as far as brow hair, brow shape, all that good stuff. So this is pretty much gonna be me showing you guys how I do my eyebrows. It's a technique that I've kind of figured out through watching YouTube, but also through having to determine how I'm gonna make my eyebrows look like they exist. So this is pretty much gonna be me explaining how I do my eyebrows. It's techniques that I've figured out from YouTube, but also techniques that I've figured out on my own. I have never really seen anyone do eyebrows quite the way that I do them. There's a few different steps. I use quite a few different products, but hopefully this kind of tutorial working with not a great eyebrow shape or lots of eyebrow volume will be good for people who, similarly to me, just don't have a lot to work with, but you want to look like you have full brows. I have a lot of people ask me like, do you do your own brows? Like, how do you shape your brows like that? And sometimes it's from people who don't realize it's makeup, but sometimes it is from people who are like, what makeup do you use on your eyebrows? Oftentimes too, it's people who have red hair who are like, what products can I use on my eyebrows that are gonna be that color? So I'll kind of go into that in the video. The main products that I featured in the video are this Morphe 350 M palette. This shade right here has been like a holy grail for me. Really these three shades right here have been a big part of my ability to do my eyebrows over the last few years. If you have reddish hair, auburn hair, maybe brown hair with like a reddish undertone, there's something so great about a brown eyeshadow in the place of brow powder. I, in the past, have used this Anastasia little duo right here. This is the chocolate duo that you also can use if you don't want to get a whole palette. I think they're like the same price though, let's be real. What I found is that the Morphe powders specifically work super well for creating an eyebrow. I also use this Anastasia Brow Wiz in chocolate. That's probably nothing new for a lot of people. This is something that everyone talks about, but everyone talks about it because it is really good. I use that to create the tail of my brow. I also use this really super dirty Anastasia A4 brush to carve out my eyebrows, which again, I go into depth. I use this Morphe brush to do my brow highlight. All of these are gonna be in the description. This has no markings on it because I've used it so much the Anastasia number 14 brow brush. This is like my holy grail brush as far as defining eyebrows and creating hair like strokes. And when I've done makeup work on people, I always use pretty much just that brush. I really hope these products and the techniques that I'm gonna talk about in the video, the tutorial itself are really helpful for anyone, like I said, who doesn't have eyebrows that are the shape they want them to be, the fullness they want them to be, if you really just need to fill them in a lot, or if you have reddish hair and you're looking for more products to use on your eyebrows that aren't the ones that are necessarily marketed towards redheads, a lot of times those can lean more burgundy or orange and they don't end up looking that great. I've used a lot of products like that, tested them out, and they just don't usually end up working out quite as well as what I have figured out for my eyebrows as far as products and techniques go. So anyways, wrapping all that up, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had fun filming it because I'm very passionate about eyebrows and it's something, like I said, that I've worked at creating the perfect formula for my eyebrows for a very long time. So I hope that this is helpful and interesting and all that good stuff. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it and I'll catch you guys later. So I'm gonna jump into how I do my brows. It's something I've fine tuned over time and I kind of do it in a little bit of a roundabout way. It's not exactly like a one and done process. This is kind of what I figured out works best for me and the shape of my face, the shape of my eyebrows, how to get like the product to stick properly, how to get it to sort of look like hair, but also like, you know, fill in my eyebrows that kind of don't exist. So the first thing I'm gonna take, this is my beat up Morphe palette. It has seen a better day. What I've done for a really long time, you can see this one I've started to hit pan on. I don't know if that's in focus. This one's a little bit more of a reddy shade. This one, I kind of work with these three shades here. This one's a little bit more of a red shade. This one is more cool tone, and this one is kind of an in-between. This is the one I've been using a lot lately, probably for the last few months, and that's the one I'm gonna use today. So if you're looking at this palette, it's the third row, third one over. So I just take this brush. This is a brush that I got a long time ago. This is a beauty control brush. I think I stole it from my mom when I was a kid. You probably can't get this anywhere, but I love this brush for brows specifically and also for the way that I use it with my brows. It disperses the product in the perfect way. It's not 
a synthetic hairbrush, but it's also not necessarily a natural hairbrush. It's almost like an in-between. Somehow it holds the product differently than a regular synthetic hairbrush. I love how I'm hyping this up and like you can't buy it anywhere because beauty control doesn't exist anymore. So what I would suggest for if you're wanting to do your eyebrows in the way that I'm doing them, you could definitely use a synthetic hairbrush like this one that is stiffer. There's just something about this brush that disperses it a little differently. I haven't seen a lot of natural hair angle brushes, honestly, so it's probably easier to just pick up a synthetic one. And I think you probably can do just about the same effect that I'm going to be doing with a synthetic hairbrush. But like I said, this one's just a little bit different. And every time that I get a new angle brush, I usually will try it out on my brows, but this one I always go back to. I'm going to just start out. I just kind of tap very lightly in the product and then I tap it off on my mirror. And what I do is I first line the underneath area here. Okay. So like I said, I kind of disperse the product underneath kind of thinly because later when I carve it out, it's going to look more bold than it does now. So it's better to use less product at first than more. As you can see, my eyebrows are pretty uneven. The muscle in my face has always made this one kind of a different shape. So I have to work to get them to meet up and be at the same level, like the top and the bottom of my brows. But yeah, just going in, I'm kind of just blending the product out, focusing the majority of that product right there where I don't have any brow hairs. And then I drag it into the corner with what's left so that it doesn't have too much product. That's pretty much what I do for the first half of the brow. This is kind of something I've started doing recently. I used to cover the whole brow in that Morphe eyeshadow, but I found that once I did the rest of my makeup, it rubbed it off a lot easier and throughout the day it didn't last as long. So I kept doing it for this inner corner of the brow because I feel like the powder looks less harsh and because I don't have very many brow hairs there, it's harder for me to create a shape that matches up with this eyebrow because these brow hairs go up like this, these ones go like that. So, so the eyeshadow for me works best in terms of making it look like there's brow hairs there because I always found that products like a brow whiz, which I'm about to use, made it look too harsh. I couldn't quite create actual brow-like strokes without it looking really harsh. And I also feel like it's a lot easier to manipulate than something like this. And it's a lot easier to get a really soft, blended out look. So next I'm gonna take Anastasia Brow Wiz. This one's a little beat up. The Brow Wiz isn't even in there properly at the moment. It's on its last leg. This is in the shade Dark Brown. I also have used chocolate before. For me, I don't know that there's a huge difference. They both kind of work for me. So what I do, I kind of will just like brush up so I can see what I'm working with. I feel like it is easier to create a brow shape if you kind of get the hairs out of the way. So I kind of just go under there and I do it pretty gently because I don't want my brows to be very dark. Um, and I just go along with what hairs are already there. I'm just going under there, lining here, lining here with little strokes. That way it's not like a harsh line. It's more kind of feathered in. What I'll kind of do too is just like brush through it really quick, make sure that I'm not missing anything kind of define this arch here, but at the same time, I'm not giving it too much of an arch. The way that you shape your brows, obviously, is completely up to you. My eyebrows, I haven't really done much shaping to them lately, so they're kind of just doing their own natural thing. You can see I kind of messed up there, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go in with concealer later anyways. Next brow, I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. This one's a little different because I don't have to create the shape of it as much. I'll just also go back in here with more product. They're super uneven, but we're going to fix that later. Where did it go? I don't know where this... Oh my gosh, there it is. It's on my table. I hear a bug in here. I need to get a new one of these so bad. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other side. Brush it out a little bit so that I can kind of see what direction I want my hairs to be going in. And then I always start on the bottom. I just think it's easier to do that part first. And the brow tail is also really important to me. I don't like to have my brow tail facing down too much because I haven't really been tweezing or shaping my eyebrows too much lately. I have been kind of just letting my brow tail do whatever it wants to do, but I do try not to have it down too much because I don't want it to drag my face down. I want it to kind of lift. So next I'm gonna take Shape Tape. Um, this is in the shade 8B Porcelain Beige. This is the Anastasia A4 brush. This is the brush that I typically use for concealer. I feel like this one gets the job done really well um, as far as distributing the product quickly but also helping me achieve a pretty precise line under my eyebrows. So what I do first, I take this 
I kind of just brush it very gently on there. I don't try not to get too much product. What I do first is kind of disperse the product underneath the brow first. That way when I finally go in and make the line, it's not gonna be too thick because if it's too thick, sometimes when you blend it out, it can get up into your eyebrows. So I wanna make it to where I don't really have to blend and I can just let it kind of dry on there, which sounds gross, but it all works out. I'm just going right underneath where my brow hairs are. I kind of like to blend it onto my eye. It's kind of like eye primer number one. You can see I kind of, I don't want it to go down. I kind of try to like keep it going straight out for the top. I'm gonna do the same thing. And again, I'm just carving out right up next to the brow hair. That way I don't have any product that you can see that's above where my brow hairs naturally are. All right, so the next thing I do before I start the rest of my makeup, this is kind of like the second to last step for my brows. I just take my Real Technique sponge. I usually start out just kind of blending out what's on my eyelid, blending that into the eye, and then I'll kind of go up around. I like to blend the concealer that's around the eyebrows into my face. The most important thing that I do here is blend out the inner corner. Obviously, I'm not gonna leave it like this. So I like to take the tip of the sponge. What I've realized I tend to do is like squish it like this. That way I can really get in there with a firmer hold. You have more control if you do that. I kind of just take it and gently pat that. You can see it's kind of blending in already. As I'm doing that, I'll kind of just go up and disperse the concealer that's above here. I kind of pull up a little bit. That way there's not that harsh line there. I kind of just will just keep blending until that line is gone. Also, if I feel like it needs it, sometimes this line under here is a little harsh, so I'll hit that one up. Okay, so just doing the same thing on the other side. I usually go in like at a weird angle, <laughs> but basically drag the product up, just like I did on the other side, I'll go underneath. So that's how I start my brows. I'm gonna follow up with how I complete them after I've done the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw that on really quickly and then come back when I'm ready to show you the last step. I'm gonna jump back in here for a second and talk about the brush I use for my brow bone highlighter and how I do that. It's not like there's anything special to it, but the brush that I use is this Morphe brush. I'm gonna try to link all the brushes below. I'm not sure what the names of all of them are, but like I said, I'll have all that info down there for you in the description. This is from some Morphe collection. I don't know what it's called. It's just this nice little flat, fluffy brush. I like to use this for my brow highlight because I feel like I can be very precise with it. So I'm just going into my Wet n Wild highlighter, which is my favorite. I'm gonna link all of my makeup info down below. I like to just gently go in there, trying to keep just on the brow bone area, not getting it too high up into where we have brow powder. And I just keep it on this part of the brow bone and blend it out slightly. All right, so now that I've almost completed my makeup, I'm ready to do the last step of my brows. With putting on foundation, powders, all that, it's gonna slightly smudge the shape that I've created and if you want it to be sharper, you can go back in with a brush and just very slightly redefine it. What I do want is for them to look very crisp. I'm going back into that same color. I'll just show you again for reference. This one right here, I didn't say this earlier. This is the Morphe 350M palette. I'm gonna go back into this shade really quickly and just hit up my eyebrows one more time. This is one of my favorite eyebrow brushes. It's completely rubbed off. Let me actually look it up really quick and make sure I'm saying the name correctly. Now that I've looked it up, I realize I don't think it's A14. I think this is just the 14 brush. This to me is the perfect eyebrow brush. When I do people's eyebrows, I don't necessarily do them the exact same way that I do them on myself. I usually use this brush. It's perfect for creating hair-like strokes. Again, I go into this product super lightly because I just never want it to be too harsh. It's easier to add more than to take away. I'll brush up. I think it's just easier to get in there with precision just ever so slightly and fill in where it's rubbed off, where I want it to be just a little bit more defined again. And I also will define the brow tail with this. Again, giving in the product a little bit, knocking off some of it and just hitting up the brow tail one more time. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera the difference between my eyebrows, but when I'm looking at it right now in my mirror, I can tell this one is more sharp looking. This one is a little bit more fluffy looking. If you wanted them more fluffy, you could just skip this step. So again, doing the same thing on this side. My baby hairs are really having a moment right now. 
So any places that I think have gotten patchy or the product has come off, I will just go back over. I like to brush through too, so I can disperse the product a little bit. I've had times when I would do my eyebrows way too dark and I'm like scarred from it. So on this eyebrow, if I feel like the top of the brow is coming up higher, I will go in with whatever product is left on this brush and just kind of blend that in from over here so that they are equal in height. Now that I've explained that last step, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my makeup and catch up with you guys in just a second. This is how everything looks once I've pulled the rest of my makeup together. I just threw on lipstick, setting spray, and some mascara. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful for anyone who's struggling, especially for people who have eyebrows that they pretty much have to create from scratch like me because mine just don't really exist on their own. It's something that I have worked at a lot for years and I feel like I'm at a really good place with them. I know I love looking at different ways that people do their brows and getting ideas. I have never really seen anyone do their brows exactly like this. So I hope this is helpful and can be a good resource for anyone trying to switch up their brows or just learn more about out different ways to create an eyebrow. If you've made it all the way through this video, thank you so much. I hope that you'll stick around, subscribe and like and all that good stuff. Maybe even leave me a comment. Um, all of my other social medias are linked in the description box below as well as the products that I use today. That about does it for this video. So I will catch you guys next time.